Welcome to the Electronic Record Management Training Module brought to you by University Archives and Record Management Services at UNC Chapel Hill. This module will take about nine minutes to complete. In this training, we'll cover what electronic records are and how to organize them. We'll address backup and security options for your records and how to adapt to changing software and hardware. Finally, we'll discuss how the university is working to retain websites. I have a folder with my personal files on my hard drive, but that does not really count. They're not public records. They're mine. Right? Wrong. The computer you use is a university-owned computer, purchased so that you can perform your work for UNC. Please be aware that the records, files, and documents on your computer are not personal and are not yours. They are public records. Even some records containing personal content unrelated to your work are still considered public records. Please be aware of this as you use your UNC computer for personal use. Public records at UNC include a wide variety of media types, like emails, tweets, Facebook posts, text messages, instant messages, and all computer files. There are also evolving forms of public records that expand as technology changes. When in doubt, any record created in relation to your work or created using UNC property can be considered a public record, and all of these records are subject to the retention and disposition schedule. This means that they all have a retention period associated with them that needs to be followed. The problems of email in conducting university business make email a particularly important public record. Because of the mass volume of emails employees receive, we have to make a decision to keep or destroy our individual emails by applying three questions. First, does the email have lasting historical value? Emails with lasting historical value document or constitute evidence of state policies, decisions, procedures, and essential transactions. If an email has lasting historical value, keep and maintain it according to the records retention schedule. If not, delete and purge once its value in. Second, who else received this message? Only the primary sender is responsible for maintaining a record copy of internal emails. However, employees are responsible for all external email they send and receive. Third, is it a work in progress? In most cases, the final version is sufficient for long-term retention. Once you've identified that an email is worth hanging on to, you need to decide what to do with it. Look to your record retention and disposition schedule for guidance. In the short term, you can file the email electronically and erase it when the retention period has been met. For long-term storage, contact University Archives and Records Management Services for directions on how to transfer emails for long-term retention. When it's time to delete electronic files, be sure you have consulted the disposition schedule before beginning. Make sure you destroy all copies of the file, including copies on hard drives, external drives, and CDs. You also need to ensure destruction, not just deletion. Simply clicking delete is not enough to destroy a file. Special software is necessary. The University Archives and Records Management Services Office can assist you in identifying the correct software. Electronic records need to be organized, and one simple way is to organize your files after a paper filing system. Be sure to use clear and easily understandable names for your records. There should also be consistency in the naming conventions of your files. Be sure to account for the limitations of your system. For example, some programs won't allow you to use particular characters in your file name. Also be sure to consider how you will search for your records and how you plan to dispose of them. When creating your electronic filing system, you should make clear directories and subdirectories. Here you will see that the subdirectory was organized by date. This is a great way to ease the burden of following the retention and disposition schedule, since retention periods are usually date-specific. Clearly labeling your media might not seem incredibly important now, but once the CD sits on your shelf for several years, you might not remember what's stored on it. When labeling your media, be sure to include the department name, the record series, the operating system, 
the software and version, the date, and access restrictions. A strong labeling system will prevent you from wasting hours later checking out what's saved on individual disks or drives. Electronic records can be subpoenaed in a court. Electronic records, therefore, are discoverable, meaning that someone suing you can ask for your records and use them against you. They can also be entered as evidence, and they must be reliable. Even paper records can be questioned in court. If you are responsible for a digital imaging system of records called into court, you need to be prepared to testify about the reliability of the system and how the system is documented and operated. Backing up your files is a great way to protect yourself from both disasters and computer malfunctions. Please back up your files as frequently as needed and in a way that simply and routinely fits into your schedule. Make sure you are using reliable media to back up your files and that you are clearly labeling your backup copies. Once you've backed up your files, check to make sure that the files copied over correctly, and then store your backup copies in a different off-site location. When thinking about security, consider these issues. First, what are the essential or vital records that you need to protect? Second, what are your security threats? Hackers? What about the party employees? Could they still access information after they've left? Next, do you have a policy about security and do you apply it consistently? Both ITS and University Archives and Records Management Services can help you develop these policies. Consult the website on your screen for more information. Finally, how do your personnel policies affect security? Are employees trained on the policy and system and how do you control access? Consider the many formats and software now obsolete because of newer technology. It's incredibly difficult to find a working computer to read your 8-inch floppy disk. It's important that you migrate your electronic records to newer media forms as they are released. To maintain your electronic records beyond 5 years, begin by confirming that files are properly saved when you first create them. Annually, check 10% of your media storage to make sure you can still access the file. For example, if you have 10 CDs laying in your desk drawer, each year go through one of them to make sure you can still open the file. At least every five years, reformat your electronic file to the most recent software version. Beyond five years, it's challenging to find computers that can read both file types. As newer software comes out, consider migrating to the latest version to ease headaches later. Many departments and offices use websites to share large quantities of information about their operations and achievements. UNC is working on an automated system that would store website information and capture updates as they happen. In the meantime, before your office or department migrates to any new web space, be sure you contact University Archives and Records Management Services to enlist their support in capturing the previous site's content for archival purposes. This concludes the Electronic Records Management module. If you have additional questions, don't hesitate to contact University Archives and Records Management Services. Thank you for your time.